Hey there, I'm Kristen, the Anxiety Therapist, and today I want to dive into a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that's self-compassion, and how it can really be a game changer in managing anxiety. So as a therapist who specializes in anxiety, I've seen firsthand the profound impact that self-compassion can have on my clients' lives. But before we get started, I want you to take a moment to reflect on sort of your visceral response to the word self-compassion. What comes to mind, any judgments? I find that oftentimes people have adverse reaction to this word. And when we think about self-compassion, it might seem like a foreign concept or something that's reserved for others. And we tend to be quick to be compassionate to our friends, family, or even strangers. But then when it comes to ourselves, it can feel really uncomfortable comfortable or unfamiliar. And so that's why I'm here to tell you that self-compassion is not just a buzzword, it's a powerful tool for managing anxiety. And I will show you how as we get further into the video. So I wanna start just by helping you understand what self-compassion is. Dr. Krista Neff has done a lot of research on this, so some of what I'm sharing with you has sort of been adapted from some of her research. The first piece of self-compassion is self-kindness versus self-judgment. Self-compassion involves treating ourselves with warmth and understanding when we're facing challenges or failures instead of being self-critical or recognizing that nobody is perfect and really just kind of acknowledging that self-criticism only adds to our suffering. The second thing is common humanity versus isolation. Self-compassion helps to remind us that we're not alone in our struggles and really all humans experience suffering and this makes it a shared part of the human experience rather than something that's unique to us. I think a lot of times when we're struggling, we think something's happening to me, I'm the only one experiencing this, and it can feel very isolating. And just to remember that suffering is just a part of life, that people suffer in different ways and to varying degrees, but it is a shared human experience. And then mindfulness versus over-identification. Self-compassion encourages a balanced approach to our negative emotions. So we want to acknowledge and observe our thoughts and feelings without suppressing them or getting swept away by them, right? Those are sort of the two polarizing experiences. We want to be somewhere in the middle and promote emotional resilience and a broader perspective on our own experiences. So if you have judgments that arise when you think about about self-compassion, you might think of it as being selfish or weak to be kind to yourself. And I wanna debunk that myth right now. Self-compassion is not selfish, it's essentially self-care. It's like putting on your own oxygen mask before helping others on an airplane. You really can't be there for anyone else if you're running on empty. And self-compassion is not a sign of weakness. It's really a testament to your strength because it takes immense courage to confront your your own inner critic and replace it with a more compassionate voice. It's really a journey of growth and self improvement So there's a specific exercise that I think helps to build self-compassion and it's called the mirror exercise and it helps you connect with your younger self. This sort of can kickstart your self-compassion journey and I want you to start by finding a picture of yourself as a child. So you can either do this after this video or you can pause this and, and go do that right now. So that that innocent, wide-eyed version of you who deserved all the love and kindness in the world. And I want you to place that on your mirror or any other surface where you'll be able to see it daily. And then each time you catch your reflection, take a minute to connect with that child version of yourself who still lives within you, right? You want to look into your own eyes and imagine speaking to your younger self. And what would you say to comfort and encourage them if they were feeling anxious or down. My guess is that you probably wouldn't chastise or, or berate them, right? This exercise can be incredibly powerful in fostering self-compassion because it helps you reconnect with that innate sense of being deserving of love and care, which we as human beings are all deserving of no matter what. And then there's sort of this ripple effect. So one of the beautiful things about self-compassion is that it doesn't just benefit you. It also positively impacts your relationships and your ability to manage anxiety. And when you're kinder to yourself, you in turn become less critical of others. So your emotional well-being improves and this makes you more resilient in the face of uh, life's challenges. And as a therapist, I've really witnessed how self 
compassion can be just a transformative force in my clients' lives. This is definitely not a quick fix, but rather a lifelong practice that you need to keep reiterating every day, and that will eventually deepen your connection with yourself and those around you. So the bottom line is that self-compassion is really your ally in managing anxiety. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution, but when you do treat yourself with the same love and kindness that you might extend to a friend or family member, you'll find that your anxiety loses some of its grip on you, and that's extremely important. So give the mirror exercise a try, be patient with yourself, and watch as self-compassion becomes this guide on your path to emotional well-being. And you truly do deserve it just as your younger self did. So until next time, take care and remember that you are worth every ounce of compassion in the world. If you found this video helpful, please check out some of my other free resources on my website, catharticspacecounseling.com. And I would love if you would drop a comment and just let me know about your self-compassion experience or what you find challenging about having compassion for yourself. I'll see you next week.